Stephen, before we um, we look at this game tomorrow night, I'm, I'm sure you see what what happened yesterday at the two games um, involving Chris Moll and Jack Grealish, and we saw what happened on Friday night. Again, this is dominating the news agenda at the moment in football, which is not what anyone wants to see. Do you feel that there's a point coming at what, where, whereby we might see players refusing to play until the authorities sort this out? Um, I don't know is, is the answer to your question because I don't know what you know players are going to be thinking and the concerns of individual players and teams across the board. Um, my concerns, obviously, the safety of, of my own players, and I'm confident that you know the going into the game tomorrow night that uh, the security will be on the toes to make sure that there, there's not a similar incident. But there's been a case over the last two three weeks where I've been coming into these press conferences and not really talking about football, which is a bigger concern. We're talking about uh, fan behaviour. Um, stuff getting through on the pitch, people entering the pitch and, and striking uh, players, which is a huge concern. And um, you know, for the image of the game, it's it's not right at all. What, what as a management team, can you do to make sure the players feel safe? Well, I think we we will obviously um, in dialogue and contact with the security and the, and the stewards at the ground or people around me will be in contact with them to you know just make sure that both sets of players, um, both sets of coaching staffs are, are safe when we go out onto the pitch to do our work. That's the only thing we can do. But you know, fans have to take responsibility and, and think before they do these type of things because. Um, if it continues, someone's going to get hurt and hurt badly, and um, no one wants no one wants it to get to that stage. The referees, obviously, the, their main concern is the safety of players on the pitch. Would would there would you, as a manager, if you felt concerned, would you be prepared to take your team off the pitch? Yes, of course. If if the situation um, if there was a situation that I thought that was necessary to do, yeah, what we'd do is we'd speak to the police and the officials on the day and we'd make a collective decision, but I'd, it's certainly a decision I'd support if any of the players, my players or opposition players, were at risk, of course. Mm. Um, and just finally on this, I mean, the, the, the issue of straight liability has been talked about and they're talking about it in England in terms of the fact that clubs would be punished for the behaviour of their own supporters. I think everyone in football agrees that that is not... I don't, I don't, agree, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think that the police should come out and say the next person to enter a pitch without permission, like, for example, yesterday, gets a very, very strict sentence in jail. You come to a game... The only way to stop. You come to a game like the one tomorrow, obviously, it's a, a rivalry. You're just, your hope that is after the game, all you're talking about is the action that's happened on the pitch between the players. Well, to be fair to both sets of supporters, we've played this fixture a lot uh, recently um, and I'm not aware of any fan problems in terms of entering the pitch and stuff. Um, I think both sets of fans have behaved pretty normal and we've had some excellent games of football. Uh, hopefully we get another one tomorrow. It's obviously a massive game with the Hamden semi-final at stake. I assume it's the type of game that you don't need to explain to your players the significance of it. No, I think they know. Uh, I think any game against Aberdeen is always huge. Um, I think... The message for me is for, forget the semi-final. Um, we've got a big, tough challenge smacking us in the face tomorrow. Um, we need to go and perform at a level that's capable of getting us the right results. I think it'd be very naive of the players to be thinking about Hamden. We've got a job to do at Ibrox first and foremost. When you play a team so regularly, like you have done with Aberdeen this season, how does that change your preparation going into the games? It doesn't. Um, we just prepare for a, for, for a good Aberdeen team, uh, a team that's been very effective on the road of late. And we do we do our normal preparation. We give the players a, a game plan, and um, we show them Aberdeen's strengths and weaknesses. And then we go out and prepare and, and focus on ourselves to make sure that we try and get the level of performance that we're looking for. Why do you think they've been so successful away from home when their home court results have been pretty poor recently? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't analysed them home and away form really, but they're an effective team. You know, it, it suits them to. Um, sit in and be organised and have men behind the ball, they follow man to man in certain areas and they've got players within their team that are quick on the counter attack, um, so I don't know, maybe their style is, is maybe suited at the moment to, to play away from home, we, we'll be aware of that, um, but we won't change in any way, you know, we, we always focus the majority of our preparation on ourselves and trying to improve us, um, but 
I don't think the players need any extra drilling in terms of what Aberdeen are about. They, they should know by now we've played them enough, and um, these players, are, you know, they're quite bright. Do you think the game behaving in? I think we've covered. I think we've covered all the fan behaviour yeah. stuff now in the interview. Well, in terms of the, the game tomorrow, the atmosphere, do you want to encourage your fans to, to be, you know, that raucous atmosphere? I don't think I have to encourage that. That's a, a given. I think um, Aberdeen at home, full house, with the opportunity to go to a semi-final, I think it's pretty standard that the fans are going to turn up and take the roof off. Um, I don't think I have to encourage that in the media. They'll be there. They'll be with us. They've been with us since day one, so that won't change. And good reward as well to reward those fans by, by going to hand for the semi-final like that was to the case. That's got to be in the players' thinking. Um, you know, that's the the, the pressure you, you play at at Rangers. That's the pressure you sh- the, the pressure you should embrace and love and be excited about. Um, it's a fantastic game under the lights against a big rival for the chance to go into the last four. Um, that's malfortunate for me, and it should be for the players. Alfredo Romero's been in the place with his new contract. It's been even more exciting than that's been. No, he's just been Alfredo. Um, he loves playing football, he loves coming to work. I think he's said that on record of late. Um, I'm sure he's pleased and um, grateful of the club looking after him because I think the club have been very good to Alfredo. Um, you know, We're hoping he continues his, his excellent form. Um, really looking forward to you know, watching him from now till the end of the season to see if he can add, add to his numbers because he's been scoring freely. Sam Cosgrove is obviously suspended for Aberdeen. He's been a key player for them over the past few months. How do you feel his absence maybe affects the game? Does that maybe count as a, a slight bonus for yourselves that he's not involved? Well, he's a good player, you know, and he's he's, he's scoring as well. You know, he's he's a, he's a player in form. He's he's a big profile up there, so of course um, he, he's a good player, and I'm sure um, Aberdeen are disappointed he's missing. In terms of us, we focus on our players and uh, the availability of of us. Um, Aberdeen have got. Good players, they're quite strong in that forward area, so I'm sure they've got a suitable replacement, whatever Derek decides to do. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and you know, say how happy I am that a player's missing because you know, that's not what type of manager I am. Uh, I worry about my players and the availability of mine, and we're, we're, we're in a healthy position, so I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Did I get any team news? Is there any players in or out from Friday night? Um, just Gareth McCauley is, is, is still got a bit of a ha- hamstring hi- issue. Um, Bonner will be back available. He's over his bout of illness. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're pretty healthy. Ryan, when you play a team six, well, you'll be playing them seven times by the end of the season. Is there any surprises by the end of it when you get them, play them for the sixth time in, in about six months? I think that's just, it's just the way the league is um, and the way the, the draws have worked out for the cup competitions. But um, I think what we do know is that every time we have played Aberdeen and faced Aberdeen, it's been a very tough match. So. Um, as the manager touched on, tomorrow night we expect the best Aberdeen team to turn up to Ibrox and um, we need to show reaction from Friday and um, make sure we turn up as well. In terms of the, the, the whole season for you guys, how important do you look at this game tomorrow night? Yeah, I think the start of the season we said that um, we wanted to do as well as we could in, in all competitions we entered. and. Um, I think we've not hidden away from the fact we want to do very well in the Scottish Cup and um, we do want to go all the way but we know it's going to be a very tough test that's in front of us tomorrow night and um, we've got to put all our focus into that match. They came in December and they, they won at Ibrox so they, 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 uh, they probably won't have any fear. Does that actually in some respects perhaps make it easier, the fact that they may well come out, they might be on the front foot? No, I think it, they'll, they'll definitely come with belief and um, a game plan to, to probably hit us on the counter attack and um, try and soak up the pressure as they did um, the last time we played. But um, as I said, we just need to focus on ourselves and um, make sure we show reaction from Friday night, dropping two points. And um, we've got a, a great chance to go and um, go to the national stadium playing another semi final. So we need to turn up and play as well as we can. Get your views of player on what we were discussing at the top of the presser. Um, how, how do you, as players, feel about the, your safety in general. I mean, you, you've had to play, you're playing a team tomorrow night that you started your career with and you've had a bit of animosity you've had to deal with since you left there. Do you feel safe as a player? And do you, you know, when you look at what happened to Jack Grealish yesterday, what, 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 do you, what goes through your mind? Yeah, I don't think, as a player, like talking for myself anyway, I don't think I ever turn up to a game or go onto a pitch expecting that a fan's going to run on and 
maybe assault you or confront you. And, um, I think, you, to be honest, you don't really think about that side of it. You just turn up, you play the game and you deal with what's on the pitch at the time. And um, But obviously for James, it puts James in, a, in an awkward position that someone has actually came on and confronted him. And, um, but I thought James dealt with it excellently. And, yeah, it's credit to him. I was going to say, did you, did you, did you speak to him afterwards? Because he dealt with it impeccably, and uh, other circumstances it might have been a difficult one for him to deal with. Yeah, he, he did speak after it. He just said, obviously, he never expected that to happen. And of course, as, as players, you never expect someone to, to come over the boards and, and be in your face and confront you. So, um, as you touched on there, James dealt with it brilliantly, and um, that's a credit to him. What's it been like playing alongside Glenn Kamara? The two of you, two of you have obviously struck up a, a good partnership in that midfield and, you, and he's come in. How have you, how much have you enjoyed playing alongside him? Yeah, it's been very good. Um, Glenn's a good footballer, he's a top footballer and um, that's obviously why the manager's brought him to the club and um, we've, we've got a, a great sort of selection of midfielders at the club at the minute so um, we all enjoy playing with each other and it's, it's tough competition for, for a place in the team and that's where you want to be at a big club.